Hello. Today, in this Azure Everyday video, we are going to show you how to connect an existing Azure Data Factory project to an Azure DevOps code repository. One good reason to use Azure DevOps or any other code repository is to create a method to preserve the code from a working version while you're making modifications. Azure Data Factory uses JSON to capture the code in your Data Factory project. By connecting Azure Data Factory to a code repository, each of your changes will be tracked when you save them. Additionally, whenever you publish, DevOps will automatically establish a new version of the Data Factory. This enables you to roll back if necessary. For the purposes of this demo, I've created a simple data factory that counts and copies an author table from an Azure SQL database to an Azure storage blob. The steps we will take will be to create a project in Azure DevOps as a repository for the data factory code elements. Then we will connect the Azure Data Factory we've already created to that DevOps project. And finally, we'll review the differences in how the GUI works after you've connected to Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps supports two versions or two flavors of a code repository. Azure DevOps, obviously, and GitHub. We will work with Azure DevOps. Before connecting, though, you have to Log in to Azure DevOps by going to dev.azure.com and then you log in. And then you can go ahead and click the blue button in the upper right hand corner called New Project. When you click on a new project, basically we're just going to fill in the defaults here because these all work for us. Um, you could open up the advanced options down below and change from version controlling using Git to version controlling with Team foundation, um, team foundation version control, and your work item process could use basic CMMI or Scrum, but we're sticking with Agile. You go ahead and you create your project, and then while that's creating, we'll go back over to our data factory. In our data factory, you'll notice that up in the upper left-hand corner, it says data factory. If you pull that drop-down open, you'll notice that it says set up code repository underneath. If you click there, we'll go through a dialogue and start setting up our connection to the code repository we just created. First, it's going to ask us what type. We do want Azure DevOps Git. Then it'll ask us which account it's associated with. I'll choose my account. And now it'll ask which project. You'll notice that here's that project we just created, the ADF DevOps demo we just created. And I'm going to use the existing repository created when we created that same repository. One thing to note is it'll ask you where you want your collaboration branch. I recommend you stick with master. This is where all your branching will merge back and also where a copy of whatever changes you have been made will then be published to the actual Azure Data Factory that runs via trigger or event or whatever. Otherwise, I just select all of the defaults. Now, while this is saving, you'll notice that while we have save as template grayed out underneath, you'll see two new save buttons pop up. And those that allow you to save the changes you made, which is separate from what you used to do, which was simply to publish them to the data factory. Now, you'll notice there's a save button and a save all button, as well as the publish button. In addition, we'll be asked, what branch do we want? In this case, we're going to say we want to use the existing branch. We could have created a new one at this point, but we're going to say the existing branch for the time being. I'll show you how to create a new branch in a moment. And now we're working out of the master branch. And you can see that up above. And it also says Azure DevOps Git. You can go back and select Data Factory, but you'll get a warning that pops up that you have Git enabled in your data factory. Publishing in data factory mode is disabled. 
please switch back to Git mode to make further changes. So you really can't work in this mode. You have to be in your, your Git environment because now it knows which branch you're working in. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say we want to make a change. And the way you do that is you create a new branch. In this case, it's suggesting I make the new branch with my name, which I will. And that's a good recommendation because as you work with others, they'll see your branch name and know what you're working on. In this case, I'm going to just drop in an innocuous wait, even though it doesn't really mean anything, just so we can see how the change gets captured. And I'm going to say this happens when we get a failure. So I'm going to connect the failure to this. And then I'm going to go ahead and say save. And I can save here or save all, which will save everywhere. All of the open projects that might be up. Now that they're saved, I'll go ahead and publish. And as you'll notice, I get an error that says publishing is only allowed from collaboration or the master branch. Merge your changes to master. So I got to do something to merge these changes to master. How do you do that? Well, if you come over here, you'll notice we're in the T Pantazi branch and we really want to be here. But if we go here, we'll notice that my wait command is no longer there. I won't have that. And that's not what I want. I, I want to see the wait occur. So what do I do? Well, there's another operation. We've already used new branch. Now there's create pull request. We want to pull that branch back into our collaboration or master branch. That'll open a new window going back to Azure DevOps, but it'll set it up with a pull request already for you to approve. So now we'll say we want the pull request from T Pantazzi and we want it to go into master. Go ahead and say create. And by the way, you can look down here and you'll see what the differences are. You'll see that here's that wait action added into my JSON. So I can see that's the new difference that I'm applying. I go ahead and I say create. And it'll pull up another dialog box. You'll show me the create and let me approve it and or complete it. Now in the approval cycle, I can use that for workflow. So I can approve it with suggestions, wait for an author, reject it, yada, yada, yada. And I can also just simply say I want to complete this. Upon completing, you'll notice that it's merging this back in so that you'll see that kind of graphic here that shows it's going back in. And sometimes you'll notice this is checked that it will delete after merging. Sometimes it won't be. Um, regardless of what you do, if you delete after, if you, when you merge, everything in this branch is going to be back in the collaboration branch. So it makes sense to delete it. And that's what we will do. Now, as we go back to our Azure Data Factory, you'll notice that if we refresh, we'll see that wait comes back into our mats to branch. And there's our wait command, as you can see. So we got the wait that came in. And in fact, you'll notice the branch is gone too. T Pantazzi branch is no longer there because we deleted it. Now, if you had left it, it would be a copy of your last changes, and that would be okay. But in this case, we just let it go. So that's how you connect an Azure Data Factory to an Azure DevOps repository. Thank you. Mm -hmm.